Thank you all very much. Um, it is a real privilege to be here. Um, I, uh, trying to get this working. All right, cool. So I, uh, as, as was mentioned, I've been working with the Apache Software Foundation uh, since about 1994, 1995. Um, and I'm currently working at AWS as a, uh, as a strategist, which means that I, I advise our teams on how to engage with open source. Um, let me start with two questions. How many of you are already maintainers? So quite a few of you. I want you to understand that this presentation is for you as well, because an important part of your job is finding and mentoring the people who will be maintainers after you. Um, the other question I want to ask is, how many of you contribute in ways that are not source code, that are not programming? This presentation is especially for you as well, because the way that you can contribute in communities is every bit as important as those that write code. In fact, in many ways, it's more important, um, because you are doing the work of main, making sure that those projects are actually usable by people and known by people. Um, so uh, let me start by talking about why I care about this topic. I started in open source because it was a hobby, it was my passion, it was something I was very interested in, and uh, this, this, which is too small for you to read because it's bad code, um, this was one of my very first projects because I was very interested in um, the mathematics of calendars, and so this is how I got involved. Over the years, my motivations have changed um, because I became a professional programmer, and since then they changed again because I became more in an advisory role. So um, <clears throat> you should know for yourself why you want to be a maintainer. Um, you need to be doing it for reasons that you care about and you need to understand those reasons. You need to understand how open source benefits you and your team and your company, and not just be doing it because someone assigned it to you. I mean, that's important as well. Having a job is an important thing. But uh, one of the things in this talk is I'm, I'm mostly speaking to people who work on open source in professional settings, but those of you who are doing it as a hobby um, you have your own reasons for this, and that is uh, the joy that it gives us when we do this. Uh, over the years, I'm increasingly seeing people and, and more alarmingly companies treating open source as simply a product they consume. And this worries me for a number of reasons. If you treat open source as something you simply consume and complain about, then you end up not being in control of your own destiny in ways that are critical to successful companies. So one of the reasons of this is that you are blindly trusting a stranger to make decisions about your business. Uh, they are setting the direction of these projects without your consultation, and they are making decisions about something that you rely on. You are building your company on top of something. And so trusting a stranger to make those decisions is very unwise. The second reason that it concerns me is that many people are consuming a product without knowing what's in it. So this is the side of a, a food package and it's full of words that you can't read because they are uh, <laughs> uh, complicated chemical symbols, and uh, you're, you're treating your, your business the same way. You're consuming things that you don't understand what they're made of. And um, you are trusting that the community, whatever that means, is going to fix your problems for you. And that is just not how it works, and you will be disappointed. Uh, if you don't participate, then you don't have a vote. You don't have a voice. And by extension, your customers do not have a voice if you do not participate. Um, the third reason that it concerns me, uh, this, this graph represents a open source project that my company relies on. And you'll notice that 
it goes down and then it disappears. This represents the activity on a project that we built a business around. And if you're not participating, you don't know that that's happening. And all of a sudden, you'll wake up and your, your uh, raw materials that you're building your projects out of, your products out of, will suddenly not exist anymore. That's very concerning. In short, you're treating open source as a shrink-wrapped product that you buy and consume and have no voice in. And uh, that is, that is uh, unsustainable. And furthermore, you're treating the volunteer uh, maintainers as your employees, which they are not. And if you don't pay them, then they don't answer to you. This disrespects the project, it disrespects your customers, and it disrespects yourself. So these are all the reasons why I care about this topic. Um, if you're participating in open source as part of a company, then you must view open source as your supply chain. And that means that you must be involved in the decisions that are made in that, because that becomes the weak link in the chain that you're hanging your company on. So let's start with definitions. The word maintainer, depending on who you talk to, it means different things. And um, in some projects, there is an official role where you as are assigned to be a maintainer. In other projects, it's more casual. Uh, and you, you need to evaluate that on the projects that you care about. I am involved with the Apache Software Foundation. We have very specific, clear definitions of who is a committer and a maintainer and a project management committee member. Most projects don't have that sort of formal definition. But in general, it refers to someone who makes decisions about the direction of a project. So you already knew that. Um, one thing to keep in mind as you listen to my advice is that every project is a unique snowflake and will behave differently. Um, and so the things that I'm telling you here are generalizations and might not be true on the project that you particularly care about. It could be that you could do all of the things that I say and will then not become a maintainer on the project. And that's entirely possible and, and even likely. But hopefully the advice that I'm giving you will be generally applicable for projects that are, that are healthy, um, that are sustainable. And if you're building your project, if you're building your company on top of a a project that is not healthy, then that's, that's another presentation that, that uh, I'm not giving today. All right, so let's jump in to the practical advice. Um, the first piece of practical advice that I would give you is to be patient. Open source participation takes a great deal of time, and that is because it is based around trust. And when you start contributing on an open source project, you are not trusted. Not because you're a bad person or because you're unreliable, but because they don't know you yet. You have to earn trust. Trust takes a long time to earn, and alarmingly, it takes a very short time to, to burn. Um, it is very easy to get rid of trust. Uh, just a few uh, unfriendly actions can ruin your many years of work on an open source project. Now, some projects will invite you to be a maintainer on day one, and some will make you work for years before you attain that status. So being patient is key to this, and communicating that to your management may be difficult. Um, you need to be able to communicate clearly and show statistics on projects that says it takes people typically a year and a half to really gain a voice in this community, for example. Um, the, uh, there's there's a, an old saying, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. And so you have to start doing this work and gaining that trust. Many years ago, um, well, not so many years ago, I had been involved in open source about 15 years at this point, and a junior developer came to me and he said, how do I obtain the level of trust that you have within open source projects? And I said, well, what you do is you start doing this 20 years ago and then you consistently, he said, no, I mean now, how do I do this now? 
you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Um, this, this is my, uh, my wife climbing a, a tree, by the way. <clears throat> um, open source is primarily composed of volunteers and people who work for companies that are not yours. And so you cannot simply throw a pull request up there and hope for the best. You must actively participate. You must, um, you must talk to people. You have to uh, have a conversation with people and earn trust and persuade them of the value of your contribution because it's not as obvious to the community as it is to you. Uh, you need to justify why your pull request should be part of the, the project that's of general interest and not just to your company. Um, this can be super annoying if this is your job and not just your passion and your manager is breathing down your neck and saying, we need that feature tomorrow. And that is just, it's just part of it. Uh, investments in open source take a long time. All right, point number two, you need to listen more than you speak. Um, especially at first, when you join a new open source project, you need to spend your first several months listening. Read everyone else's tickets. Read the forum, the mailing list, the Slack, whatever it is. Learn who the people are that matter in the community. Learn the cast of characters. Understand who everyone else listens to and listen to them even more carefully. Um, you know, it's like when you, when you start watching a television show and it's already four seasons in and you don't know who everybody is. You have, to, you have to watch several episodes before you start understanding the interplay between the different characters. Open source is, we use this word too much, if anything, it's a community. It is not, it is not a commercial software project. It's a community and you have to understand uh, where the community pain points are. What's not getting done? Maybe you can help with that. Um, who is getting burned out? Who is angry that um, someone else hurt their feelings? You know, these are all things that you have to learn. And you also need to understand that if you offer solutions that don't solve anyone else's problems, then you're going to be not only ignored, but you're going to lose the opportunity to earn trust. Um, Epis, Epis, Titus, who was a, a philosopher in ancient times, he said, we have two ears and one mouth, so we can listen twice as much as we speak. And uh, this is a word of wisdom for open source participation. The third piece of advice that I would give you is to be visible. Um, I mentioned earlier, you can't just open a PR and hope for the best. You have to be visible. And there are many ways to be visible that aren't just, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, you, you need to go and do useful things. You need to, um, where, where does the community chat? Go there and answer questions. Answer the beginner questions, because the people who are senior in the community are tired of answering those questions. They might be getting irritated and grumpy. So be the person who patiently answers the beginner's questions. Uh, when a decision is being made, speak up, vote on that decision. Now, within the Apache Software Foundation, we have a tradition of voting on decisions. And if you are not an official member of the community, then your vote doesn't count as much. But that's not a reason not to vote. You simply say, I am... Uh, the, the word that we use is non-binding. It just means this is my vote, but maybe you won't count it. But I'm expressing my opinion. That has several important side effects. One is it shows people that you're there, you're being visible. The other is that it expresses your company, your customers, your personal opinion in a conversation where it was previously absent. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is one of the biggest benefits of being a maintainer, is that you have a voice in decisions, and your voice matters. Um, this, uh, 
this picture is supposed to represent two people arguing. It made me laugh. So um, it's, uh, it's important to remember that you will not win every argument. You will not, simply by expressing your opinion does not mean that your opinion will be the one that wins. You should express it so that people know it's there. You should understand that the answer will often be no because your priorities are not yet aligned with those of the project. Um, so don't, don't get angry, don't yell at people, don't, uh, don't tell people that they are stupid. Participate in the project and earn trust over time by investing. All right, this is uh, point number four, and that is be useful. What you discover as a project maintainer is that your main job is not as the superstar, it is as the janitor. It is cleaning up the messes that no one else wants to clean up. It is taking out the trash, it is fixing the irritating bugs that nobody cares about, it's fixing security problems. Um, and a good maintainer is not the CEO, they are the janitor, they make the place beautiful. They clean up messes. Uh, they make it welcoming for others. They work hard on bringing real value and not just the flash. And often they are only noticed when they miss things. <laughs> they are often only noticed when they unintentionally break things. So uh, don't expect that becoming a maintainer means that you will always be the one up on stage. It primarily means that you'll be the one behind the stage fixing things. Okay, so practically, what does that mean? It means that when these PRs come in um, and you suddenly discover that you have a thousand open PRs, you should go in and review them. And that is difficult and painful. You should give constructive advice and not simply minus one. Um, you should encourage people towards better solutions. Now, when you're first getting involved in a, in a project, you're not a maintainer yet, reviewing those pull requests will teach you more about the code than anything else because it will show you how other people are thinking about the code, it will show you what's broken in it, it will show you parts of the code that you would never have looked on your own. And so this is a great way to learn the deep, intimate details of the code. Um, it tells you also what people care about. It tells you what other people think is broken, and that is, by proxy, listening to your customers. Because if people are complaining about something in the code, then your customers are also, and you may not have heard it yet. And it's also a great way to welcome new contributors. Documentation can always be made better, and any contribution to documentation will be greatly welcomed because very few people like writing documentation. I got involved in open source by writing this, the documentation for the Apache web server. And because I worked on that when no one else wanted to, I gained trust in a, in a community that had a great product that people weren't using because the documentation was terrible. Um, and, and you can start with very simple contributions. You can open up the, the code in your, in your uh, code editor and turn on the spell check feature and uh, submit some, some uh, spelling corrections. That's how I've got started on many projects. And while you're doing that, you are learning about the project because you're reading the documentation. Um, translations on every major open source project in the world are out of date. If you speak more than one language, then you have the ability to contribute translations of documentation to projects, and that is a great way to get involved. And it's a skill that almost everyone in this room has. Um, another useful thing is to summarize discussions. If there is a discussion in a ticket, on a mailing list, in a, in a forum that has gone on for several days, everyone has forgotten the points that have been made. 
And if you read through the discussion, there's two positives that come out of that. You're able to summarize it clearly for other people, and you start to understand what people's concerns are more deeply. Now, this may seem unintuitive when you're a beginner, um, when you are looking to be welcomed, but if you welcome other people, then you are improving the community as a whole and earning trust. What do you wish that someone had done for you when you started contributing? Go do that. Um, was the onboarding complicated? Go fix that. Uh, if you had difficulty setting up the development environment, Find a way to explain it better. Find the solutions that you found for yourself and document that for other people. And, and often there isn't any onboarding documentation, so anything you can write around that is going to be a benefit for the whole community and it's going to earn trust. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of the uh, the leadership principles that we use in my company, we, it's, uh, we, we say, think of yourself as an owner, not a renter. And uh, if you can imagine, you're renting your first apartment, you're, uh, you knock holes in the walls, you don't really care, um, you put nails in the wall, uh, you don't clean up very well. But once you buy your own home, you start thinking, this is mine, um, I, I care about this, I want to be able to, you know, maybe sell it someday or give it to my children. I care about it. I want to maintain it. I take care of the flowers. This is the way you should think about open source projects. Think of them as though they are already yours and it will change your attitude about how you make contributions. You won't just contribute the patch that is that you care about. You'll go and you'll fix the annoying bug that's been sitting around for a while that no one has fixed yet because you care about the broken windows. Don't act like you are an outsider trying to break in. Rather, act as though this is already your home and uh, I want to improve it for my guests. Um, another saying uh, is to dress for the job that you want, not the one that you have. So uh, here are some of my colleagues dressing for the job that they want. Um, if you want to be a maintainer, be a maintainer. Do the things that you wish the maintainers were doing that aren't getting done. And that will lead you into uh, a deeper understanding of the entire community, and it will lead you down that path to being a maintainer. Um, where I live in Kentucky, there is a law that says that if you use a piece of land for 20 years and nobody complains about it, it's yours. This is actually a law, it's called squatter's rights. So this is the land that is back behind my fence. I've been using it for uh, about 25 years and now it legally belongs to me. This is the way that you should treat open source. Behave as though it is yours. And uh, that's, that's what I have time for. I have just a few minutes if people have questions or you know, good stories that they would like to tell. Um, and, and, you know, maybe what is the thing that you wish contributors would do on your projects and, uh, and do that. There's, there's a mic around here if anybody has any questions, but thank you. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, I hope that every one of you is going down this path toward being a maintainer.